So I attempted my very first Pokemon Legends Arceus Nuzlocke, the game that took some really big leaps for the Pokemon series as a whole. Playing as someone who was brought back to the early days of the Hisui region, you are tasked by the region's professor to help create the very first Pokédex. This game would also introduce an extremely new style of battling, which means battles are going to be a lot faster, which means a lot more of your Pokemon are going to faint, which means Nuzlocking it is going to be extremely painful. Now if you don't know what a Nuzlocke is, here's a quick rundown. If a Pokemon faints, it is considered dead and you cannot use it again. You can only catch the first Pokemon you see on a route. In this case, we will be using any named locations in each area since routes aren't a thing in this game. And third, you have to nickname every single Pokemon you get. There's some other rules that I'll talk about along the way, but I'm actually writing and recording this part of the script before even opening the game, so hopefully it goes well. So I started off my journey with my trusted Cyndaquil that I loved very much and definitely didn't let it get murdered to a Zubat before getting to the first boss fight. Like a level 12 Zubat. But hey, look, I have plenty of time and encounters to make up for this heartbreaking loss. Ah, uh, no! Okay, so I lost to the Arcanine boss fight and it put me in like a really bad mood for about a solid week. Oh yeah, and did I mention one of the Legends Arceus Nuzlocke rules means if I black out in the overworld as well, Fuck. that counts as a loss. You failed! I also caught a shiny Motham in this run, which means I had to delete my save along with the Motham. But for my second run, I changed absolutely nothing about my strategy except for choosing Oshawott as my starter. Oh, oh my fucking god, that is so cute. I got my starter squad and went through the absolute funnest part of the game. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you the incredible dialogue of Pokemon Legends Arceus. And then you just flex your arm. So yeah, a lot of this game is just me spamming the A button so I could do about half an hour of gameplay just to do it again. But now we have our first trainer battles coming up. Now the thing to mention with Pokemon Legends Arceus is that the trainer battles are scarce, but they have almost a guaranteed chance to take out at least one Pokemon. So preparing for them is absolute key. My first battle was against a Munchlax, which my Bidoof named me and was able to do some chip damage to it. And the Shinx that I needed for my next trainer fight misses his Fire Fang and gets absolutely bodied. Oh, because it missed, I got... But that doesn't matter now. With the new pathways being unlocked, I got the rest of my squad and was stopped by an Alpha Cricketoon. Now you would think a super effective Pokemon like Geodude would be able to defeat him easily. Well, think again. But luckily my Starly was able to finish up the rest of the help. Afterwards, I did about 10 minutes of dialogue and got the rest of my encounters at the moment. But unfortunately, I tried to get greedy by getting a Scyther, which cost me an encounter and a few Pokemon. Ah, bitch. Fuck you. So I had the rest of the whole area with a dog trash team. That's where I saw this little man with a cute little Goomy. Now the Goomy is dead. I don't, I don't remember writing that into the script, what the fuck? After this battle, I had a close run in with the Glaceon, almost taking out two of my Pokemon. Now this is an issue for me because I have bigger problems at the moment. Now this is time for the first Frenzy Pokemon battle with a wild cleaval. Now these battles are scary because as seen before in attempt one, if I lose in these battles, it counts as a loss. Now this battle isn't any hassle because you can get cleaver locked into place, but the other ones to come are genuinely difficult. And you may have been noticing, I'm not really dwelling on the Pokemon in this video too much because this game, if you get too attached to Pokemon, it'll drag you down. Like, oh, you just caught this Pokemon? Well, now it's dead. What about this Pokemon? Dead too? Oh, and this one you've never even took out of the box? He's dead too. That's how this game works, okay? Just try to never get attached. After heading home with roughly five minutes worth of dialogue and half an hour worth of grinding for the next star rank, we make our way to the Crimson Myland. Not before battling our rival. It was going well until our Pikachu took out my boy Kadabra. Fuck you, dude. But we can't be sad about that now. We have to head to the Crimson Myland. We were able to grab a few encounters to rebuild our team and take on Volo, which is where I was reminded that abilities don't exist in this game. Because Gibble, using Bulldoze, I thought we'd be safe with my Ghastly, but no. 
just another reminder that nothing is safe. But it's okay because this lady with a leaf told me to go get some bandits, which is what I did. They only had a Toxicroak, so my king took him out with no problem. We get sent to battle the sleepiest little man who was also super strong. So I had to rebuild the team specifically for this battle. And I even had to sack some Pokemon just to win this. Uh, oh yeah, and we did the Lilligant Frenzy, but that one's really easy as well. Now we are off to the Cobalt Coastlands, which is where we have our first multi-battle where our starter gets knocked out by a Glacier. So I angrily took out the rest of my ride on. I collected my encounters for the areas and I saw some cute little guys. I need to get some food for Basker Legion, but the guy who makes it needs a Dusclops, which he is way too scared to collect on his own. So I get sent to catch one myself. After showing him the Dusclops I've just caught, giving the food to Basker Legion, we are now able to use one for ourselves. Now we are able to travel across the water and the bandits take one of the little guys. But we say that can wait and we can go travel other areas to get more Pokemon. We head back to the boss arena, which is where we face off against Arcanine, the killer of my last run. But after some major concentration, I was able to take him out with zero damage taken. This was genuinely frightening for me. I was shaking so much during this battle. After calming down the frenzied Arcanine, we went back home and I grinded for this godsend of a team. And this is the team I wanted to take me to the end. To explain, we had Hans the Apom and Mini the Toxicro, two speedy attackers. We also have Monkey the Infernape, just a great Pokemon all around. Trap the Gardevoir, an amazing special attacker, and great eye candy for the team. We had Pound Sign the Sphelio, just a big boy. And lastly, my baby, my baby boy, my favorite on the team, we had Uh Oh Ice the Torterra. We went to the Coronado Highlands with the goal to calm the frenzied Electrode. We were escorted by Ingo, which ended up getting us to cross paths with Melly. She battled us and lost extremely quickly to Mini. We met back up with Ingo where he battled us as well. We made quick work of his Machoke, his Gliscor immediately took out Trap, which unfortunately really hurt the team. Poundsign was able to avenge Trap, lastly was a Tangler, which I mean, it's, it's a Tangler, <laughs> like, <laughs> what, do you, what do you want from me? But this unlocked us the Sneasel Mount, which allows us to climb up mountainsides without having the Skyrim method it with Weirdeer. We replaced the newly opened spot on our team with Scary the Dusclops, someone we snatched up back in the Cobalt Coastlands. We got some encounters and went to battle Melee again. She leads with Skunk Tank, which moves first and gets a critical burn flamethrower hit on Meanie. I fumbled around and sent out Uh Oh Ice to try to take out the Skunk Tank, and he lives with a sliver of health which unfortunately means Uh Oh Ice was taken out by another flamethrower. I sent out Hands to take out the rest, but they managed to put me asleep and strong and agile style Hands to death. Oh yeah, and these Pokemon are 20 levels lower than me. Totally fair game, but luckily Scary was able to shadow ball the rest. After deciding to put Gligar and Voltorb on the team, we head off to battle the frenzied Electrode. Now this battle is just stalling after a bunch of bomb barrages to then barrage him with bombs. So we were able to finish this battle after about 10 minutes or so. We do the remaining encounters for this area and decided to implement a rule. This rule is in any location, I am allowed to catch either one alpha Pokemon or the first space time distortion Pokemon I see. I never ended up entering any space time distortions. So I caught an alpha Scyther and spent half an hour trying to get the black or guy trying to evolve him. We had a rival battle up next and she sends out a Mr. Mind that gets taken out by Pound Sign that I stupidly sent out Don't not remembering she had a Pikachu that unfortunately one shot Pound Sign. Oh. Meanie was able to avenge him but then a Star Ravia with Brave Bird one shot Meanie as well. Cleaver was able to clean up but those are some really big losses for us. We get sent to the Alabaster Icelands where we collect a bunch of encounters. We also met up with Garrick who challenged us to a battle. He sends out a Glalie and a Frostlass. It's okay because I did have Monkey that was able to take out the Glalie and narrowly took out the Frostlass. After that, we met up with Sabi who wanted us to chase her around the map. While chasing her, we did a bunch more encounters and we met up with her at Snowpoint Temple, which includes a boring ass puzzle that I will not be showing because I hate this part of the game. Sabi challenged us to a battle and can I just say this game is getting ridiculous with its trainer battles. Last battle was fair enough, but this is a level 50 Rhyperior and a level 30 Electrovire and Magmortar at the same time. This is honestly getting out of hand. I was only able to get one hit with Cleaver before he was knocked out. I didn't even get a hit with Ram before he was knocked out. Monkey was able to take out the Rhyperior and Electrovire before being taken out by the Magmortar. 
Luckily, Jolts was able to finish before we could lose anybody else. That was three of our biggest losses, especially nearing the end game. We rebuilt the team with Baby Girl the Bergmite, Punch the Riolu, and Munch the Munchlax. We traveled back to Snowpoint Temple one more time to battle Sabi, but luckily she only had a bravery, which means Jolts was able to take her out with no problem at all. After this battle, we unlocked the best mount in the game, Bravery. Now for the coolest frenzy battle in this game, Avalog. This is just a series of really drawn out attacks, so we had no issue defeating him as well. Now that he's gone, we went back to claim a friend in the form of an Alpha Torterra, but he uh, he knocked out Scary and I ran away instead. Yeah, that, like, <laughs> that's, that's just my bad. But now, ladies and gentlemen, we are in the end game. So the commander finally noticed the big rift in the sky and banished me from the village. Volo and... Oh, mama. Um... They took us both in, and we were faced with the decision to go with the Diamond Clan or the Pearl Clan. Diamond we clan. chose the Diamond okay. Clan because Obviously. it's Obviously. it's just the right choice. I mean, Dialga is just better it's in right every single way. Strength. But in order to save the Hisui region, we needed to battle Alpha Pokemon protecting the Lake Caves. First was an Alpha Gudra that Punch was able to defeat with no problem at all. We met up with Mesh Spirit, and they asked me some questions, and then I was on my way. Next up was an Alpha Hisui and Zoroark which Munch was able to stall out. Uxie came out with a random puzzle that I needed to solve, and I definitely didn't look up the answer to a kid's game puzzle. Lastly was Alpha Overquill, which almost took out Swift with a poorly timed Ice Ball. As long as he doesn't have any ice moves, we are fine. Oh my god. After a boring catching tutorial with Azov, we were able to complete the Red Chain. We head off to Mount Coronet, which we are faced against the Ninja Benny. His Miss Magius was taken out by Munch but an unlucky switch to Sneasler knocked out our boy. His Sneasler was taken out with a risky switch to Swift. After this, his Gardevoir got a calm mind, strong styled Psychic, so Swift was more than finished with this. Snip was able to take out the Gardevoir, and lastly his Gallade fell to Snip as well. We replaced our fallen members with Happy the Voltorb and Shell our Gastrodon. Headed back to Mount Coronet, we are faced to battle with Kamado. His bravery fell easily to Jolts. After this, he sends out Snorlax, who fell easily to Punch as well. Switching into Clefable, we send out Snip, who was able to take out the Clefable with no problem. His Golem took out our boy Snip, so a switch into Happy took out the Golem. Now there's nothing between us and Dialga, besides me misunderstanding what we had to do, and knocking it out after losing Punch, Shell, and Happy. So we had to do the exact same fight again, with a new team of Hot, Tongue, and Noor. Successfully catching the Dialga this time around, we went off and caught ourselves an Alpha Golem, and attempted the Alpha Torterra again with no luck. I'll be honest, I wasn't paying attention at this part of the game, but we were ambushed by bandits while we were trying to collect some gems. She sends out her Rhydon, and me playing like an idiot, I lost the Alpha Golem. Baby Girl took out the Golem. She sends out her Gengar, who was able to Hypnosis and Strong Style Shadow Ball Baby Girl. Tongue was able to clean up the rest, and we set back for the Coronet Mountain. Now we are against the stupid looking Palkia. Now this is the final battle of the campaign. This is going to be the hardest battle of the game, and will surely test how far we have come in this Nuzlocke. Oh, the battle's done already, cool, cool. We caught the Palkia, and we went back home to celebrate. Hi everybody, it is it is me at Lice. It's been a huge struggle to actually get this video out. Uh, not the actual filmmaking process, like at all, in the slightest. That's been awesome. It's been so fun. Um, just the whole, I got very sick twice and moved house. So, hence the new background. Um, but besides, I, I'm so happy with how this video turned out. Like, I'm so happy. And I'm already in the prog like, process of <laughs> getting the new one organized. But yeah, if you guys did like this video, make sure you check out one of the other ones from years ago that, you know, I I, I still put a lot of effort into those. Um, but yeah, that'd be awesome uh, for you guys to check that out. And uh, I'll be streaming on Twitch uh, from now on. I stopped streaming so I could get this video done, but... I, my complications but yeah thank you everybody uh and yeah i'll see you i'll see you on twitch